a quick word from our sponsor guys you already know them symbol the stock market of all sports apps where you go you combine all your sports knowledge and try and make some money and hey it's risk free as well with code the hub you get up to 500 dollars protected from your initial investment when you go and get yourself involved with the market and like i've said before even though my only investment was the giants i only bought stock from the giants i still made money even though the giants ever since i got the stock has gone down down and down i made about 10 bucks off of it but the nfl season might be over it doesn't mean that symbol is over i've mentioned before symbol is also involved with the nba mlb and college football and i'm pretty sure nhl either way you guys are going to see it on the screen as i'm quickly sharing the symbol website right here but go over make your picks get a couple teams in hey maybe the knicks are back up maybe i'll get involved with them we just made a trade with cam reddish we'll see what's up with the knicks or you could even get involved in their symbol 13 nfl playoff pick them you pick an nfl playoff game against the spread every week you go 13 for 13 on each picks you win a choice of five thousand dollars or one share of every symbol team and then for every correct pick you get a one wheel spin giving you a chance to win a random nfl team nba mlb nhl or college football team shares on simple stock market for sports but head over to right now www.symbol.app and use my code the hub or just use my link in the description down below your what's up giants fans hub watchers youtube and rumble subscribers twitter and instagram followers it's kush back at it again with another new york giants video not update uh kind of similar to the gm candidates video i did where i went over about eight general manager candidates for the new york giants um oh no i think it was seven at the time because it's risen to eight or nine now but i went over the seven that the giants requested interviews with and they are doing interviews as we speak i believe or are gonna start conducting them um today into the following week and for this vid i won't necessarily be talking about multiple candidates for the head coaching position as much as i am going to be focusing on one guy and that one guy is brian flores i am going to list you know people that are thought to be candidates for the head coaching position but the whole point of this video is to kind of give you guys why i think flores is the best choice um, and a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that he is the uh, the hottest commodity on the head coaching market right now. And with good reason as well that he's the hottest commodity. But first, real quick, who are even the head coaching candidates for the Giants job right now? Um, one of them is actually our current defensive coordinator, Patrick Graham. Uh, a couple of people have thrown this idea out there, but we all know Graham has been offered head coaching jobs uh, last year in the hiring cycle. And Graham for a while has been thought that you know to be somebody that could potentially ascend to a head coaching position in the nfl whether that's the time right now or not not sure but he is somebody that is definitely a candidate for the job he is the current defensive coordinator of the giants now i don't know if patrick graham or how i was gonna say i don't know how good he'd be as a head coach i just don't know how he'd fare as a head coach and i will honestly say that for anybody on the list that is going to be a first time head coach but Graham, of course, is known for his defense. He runs a stellar defense with the New York Giants for two years in a row now. A defense that at first did more than a lot of people thought it could. But there are issues, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes uh, it takes a little bit too long for that defense to get going. Sometimes, uh, surprisingly, this year at least, there was issues with tackling and whatnot. But for the most part, Patrick Graham is a great defensive coordinator. And he is actually one of the candidates. Another candidate is um, another coordinator, offensive this time, Brian Dable from the Buffalo Bills. Brian Dable, very successful coordinator from the Buffalo Bills, a very another really hot commodity in the hiring cycle right now. Just like I said with Patrick Graham, not sure how he's going to fare as, as a head coach. He's a really hot commodity, or people like to think of Brian Dable when it comes to the Giants head coaching job because of the struggles of our offense in the past two years. Same thing goes for Eric Bieniemy, another great. I, I think Brian Dable and Eric Bieniemy are up there with Byron Leftwich. Those three guys are probably like the three biggest offensive coordinators in the game right now. Um, running three of the best offenses in the game. The only person not listed there is uh, Sean McVay of the Rams, but of course Sean McVay is the head coach. Uh, we know he has a lot to do with the offense though. But getting back on topic here, um, Brian Dable and Eric Bieniemy, both of them, they're really great offensive coordinators. I'm just not sure how they'd fare on the defensive end of the defensive side of the football. And I know what you, you guys are going to get annoyed with this real quick, which is why I'm like only going to do Patrick Graham, because this is 
more of my thoughts on the uh, head coaching position and who I want than it is a breakdown of each candidate, once again, like that previous video was. If you guys do want a breakdown of each candidate, uh, simply request it in the comments and I'll, I'll definitely do that. But Brian Dable, uh, Eric Bieniemy, they will also be first-time head coaches, I believe. Both of them, if they're, uh, if they're, what's the word I'm looking for? Their guy, not necessarily their guy, but the guy from their organization gets hired for the GM job. For Brian Dable, it will be Joe Schoen. For Eric Bieniemy, it will be it, it will be Ryan Poles. Both guys, by the way, two of my top three candidates for the job. If they get hired. It's safe to assume the chances of the coaches themselves getting hired kind of goes up a little bit because, you know, they they know the coaches. They've worked with them before. They've seen them firsthand. They probably have a lot more confidence in them than I certainly do. Uh, Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator for the Bills. Now, he has been a head coach before. Um, I think he was with the Minnesota Vikings from 2010 to 2013, had one playoff appearance. But other than that playoff appearance, kind of very disappointing as a head coach not necessarily somebody that i believe could turn around a losing and bad franchise which the giants are right now but he does have that experience under his belt and we've seen what he can do um uh, don wink markendale of the uh baltimore ravens was actually somebody that we interviewed last coaching cycle um in 2020 uh was somebody that i thought was going to be the head coach um i actually i think i wanted don wink markendale to be our new head coach back in 2020 um because i love what the ravens do on defense and i, I thought we were gonna go in a defensive um kind of like a defensive uh not role is the word i'm looking for uh situation i guess we went with their past two coaches being offensive guys i thought maybe we we're gonna go back on the defensive side of the football um that was not the case uh donway markdale is also somebody that's been in the game for a while um and been with the ravens for uh for a while as well and there is a uh a somebody from his organization that is in the gm search as well with joe horitz who is i'm gonna be honest with you joe horitz is probably the best person available for the general manager job uh just because the ravens drafting and the ravens way of building their team even their free agents the ravens have been the best team in my opinion when it comes to drafting and evaluating talent in the nfl for many years not just recent history like for many years back to ozzy newsom days and Ozzie Newsom was one of the best if not the best general manager in the NFL so I just have a lot of respect for what the Ravens do I like a lot of what they do and it goes down to their coaching as well Jim Caldwell somebody that I actually do like to be the head coach this time around uh him and Brian Flores I'm gonna be honest with you probably the only two candidates that I'm really gunning for is I guess the phrase I'd use here to be the head coach of the New York Giants and, and that's because and we finally get like six minutes into the video i apologize for that we finally get to what my personal wants for the head coach is and it's not that much but it is going to be hard to find i want a head coach that has been a head coach before which bo caldwell and um flores check off so does leslie frazier but what leslie frazier doesn't check off is that i want somebody that has you know a good amount of success to the name and by good amount i mean just like at least a couple years uh bo caldwell and um flores checked it off caldwell in detroit still remains the only coach in recent memory to have any type of success in detroit with the lions and i think that does kind of lie for all you know the jokes that i that i can make about detroit or anybody can make about detroit jim Caldwell still remains the only dude to, to be successful there he's even had playoff appearances there that deserves a lot more respect and our recognition i think that, that it does not currently have brian flores same for miami miami was not like the most attractive spot to be in they were kind of a mediocre middling almost you know potentially uh or not potentially almost consistently bad team when Flores got there and the third thing so my first two once again were you were head coach second one was you had success sustained success the third one was and this is the hardest one which is why it eliminates almost all candidates you show that you could turn a program around which once again both Caldwell and Flores check off Flores completely turned around Miami and has helped them be what they are today um they they've drafted you know okay they've drafted well they haven't drafted the greatest same with their free agents but the reason they are where they are today is because of the development from brian flores and the way he coaches them jim Caldwell completely turned around detroit all right there's i don't even need to the, from the moment if you didn't even know about the guy from the moment you heard he's the only person that won there and actually had playoff appearances there you should know what that means and he has been on the nfl for a while which is the only reason i have flores above him um uh, he's been out of the NFL, I think, since 2017. So and that's not even that long ago. It is long in terms of when you consider how offenses have evolved and stuff like that. But it's not that long ago. And, and with Flores, 
in addition to matching up all those criteria there's actually um there's there's reports suggesting that flores is actually interested in the giants job and the giants are interested in him which i mean they better be <laughs> but there, there is but potential mutual interest there according to jordan saltz on twitter if i'm pronouncing his name right i'm gonna throw up the tweet for you guys to see he says don't sleep on the prospect of brian flores to the giants i'm told owner john mara respects and likes flores a brooklyn native and that flores would pri prioritize the g-men job at or near the top of his list per a source close to the situation if this source close to the situation is speaking any type of truth i feel like the giants need to get him in as soon as possible get him interviewed and get him hired because i don't know how our head coaching interviews are lined up but you always want to be the first one in there before somebody else gets in makes flores a sweet deal gives them like a bunch of boatload of money you know a car a house a boat anything that he wants a private jet and then he's like listen the benefits are too much here i'm gonna go here uh like you want to get in quick and early especially if there's mutual interest and uh, honestly how many times have we compared the giant situation and the dolphin situation uh, and this is kind of getting away from just the proven success of brian flores which alone should be enough reason to hire him but we've compared them so much He's actually had success in his situation versus ours. He's had a little bit of experience uh, with Patrick Graham, which some people do want to keep Patrick Graham. I'm not saying Brian Flores coming here automatically means we keep Graham, but I guess it raises the chances a little. Whoever he hires on the defensive side of the ball, I really wouldn't mind. I would trust him to know what he's doing. Uh, but, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't mind keeping Patrick Graham either. The thing with hiring Brian, Brian Flores, though, is you're going to need to hire a great offensive coordinator and at that point i feel like the offensive coordinator job and the offensive coordinator position becomes almost as important as the head coaching position we're going to be looking out for who the potential candidates over there are and unless there's guys making lateral moves meaning offensive coordinators that are currently offensive coordinators in the nfl and currently have good good success are moving laterally from offensive coordinator position at their team to the giants uh we're gonna have to hire somebody new right um the only names that are coming to mind when it comes to that uh mike kafka who i believe is working with the quarterbacks over at kansas city uh joe brady former offensive coordinator in the panthers not sure if he's still any type of uh big name out there pep hamilton but i think pep hamilton is sticking with the texans unfortunately uh and there was another guy that worked with um worked with uh with quarterbacks as well i think it's the saints quarterback coach but at that point for the offensive coordinator position like i said unless lateral moves are happening you're going to be taking a chance but brian flores i do believe is the best guy for the job i mean he's the best head coach out there right now um uh, jim harbaugh i would love i've spoken about him before but i don't think it's realistic flores proven winning turned the program around three very important hard to fill uh categories that he fills all of the only one out there that matches him on that front is Jim Caldwell. Um, I don't know if Jim Caldwell is going to be coming out of retirement or anything like that. And there's mutual interest. Giants, go out there, interview him soon, go get him. I feel like he would be the best guy, at least from the current candidates that we have right now. That's it for now. Put your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.